Welcome to the NOC review from the 22nd C3 um, event in the BCC. My name is Stefan Woy, Sebastian Wagner, uh, Werner, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, he's also known as Blackwing, and normally I call him Blackwing. So if, uh, no, it's not Darkwing, it's Blackwing. Um, welcome all who joined us for a good hour. Um, the talk itself will have about 40 minutes, and uh, if there's any questions, suggestions, they are welcome. Ask during the presentation if something is not clear or you want to have some more information. Um, first thing to start, we are only two people standing here. Um, NOC itself has 16 people working on it. Some of them are in the auditorium, some standing on the side. We're very international, You're very European this year. We have for lots of people from Amsterdam working in the NOC, and um, we have people coming from the US helping us with the wireless network. Um, thank, you, thank you very much, and thanks for your, all the work you have done for us. Before we start, one question, and this is the thing uh, which we ask us too, because we didn't get any feedback from the help desk we have invented this year, and they have said that they don't have much work to do this year. Are you happy with the network? Yes. Raise your hand, please. That's good to hear. After the last years, um, we have made quite some changes here, and let us, let, let's maybe begin with the um, agenda. Um, we have uh, a few points here. Um, first, a recall of the 21st C3 from the last year. Um, a technical requirement we have um, uh, formulated for this year's event, uh, uplink, topolo uh, uplink topology, network topology, traffic statistics, anomalies, and an outlook, outlook for the next year. There are some ideas what we could do better and some things we haven't implemented this year. And let's start with the first sketches. Um, we have had um, unforeseen hardware problems last year. Um, let's call it the other state with some of the equipment we have had. And uh, some of these problems um, came from late delivery of the equipment itself. Some of this equipment was broken. And um, lots of people um, have had lots of problems with the wireless equipment. It was one of the main problems last year. And we have a lot of problems with the high traffic load between the different levels of the building. Um, therefore, the decision was made, look for sponsors which can supply us with enough LAN hardware this year very early. Um, there were good talks there, and we are, the last sketch will show us all the sponsors. I want to, not to bore you with these stuff right now. Um, in Ausland working, but hmm, very late. I think it was the 28th of uh, December where we could say that it worked actually. Um, Uplink worked quite well. Um, it was uh, implemented two weeks before the start of the event. It was around 600 megabit last year. And some, as most of you um, you know, from the last talk from last year. Um, as I said before, wireless LAN was suboptimal. And one of the uh, biggest problems last year was that you were not informed. We have worked on the network, and nobody knows what we are doing actually on the network. We tried to make it better this year. and. As a summary of the last year, it worked, but it was not good. This is the setup um, we have had last year. Um, you see the different levels is, uh, from A is the hack center up to the D level, this magic D level uh, at um, conference room one, the gallery up there. Um, we have installed there in the A and in the D level the core switches. Um, it's the same thing this year, but uh, Sebastian will uh, talk about later. And uh, we have uh, some stuff from Cisco there, switches in the B and C level. Missing here is the wireless LAN. Some people say it wasn't there. Um, OK, 77 VLANs, um, multi-gigabit backbone. And um, we have over 3,400 DHCP leases. I have also heard numbers of about 4,000 DHCP leases last year. This um, correlates very good with the number of people uh, visiting us last year. I think I've heard numbers of about 3,500 people being here, 3,400 DHCP leases means everybody has a laptop or a device with a MAC address. Okay, um, what we tried to implement this year 
where um, that we have high bandwidth in the whole building and every outlet uh, you should get a minimum of a 100 megabit port. Actually, you get gigabit ports at every copper port in the building. And the VLAN, especially for the lecture rooms, should work. And um, we have tried to make a very simple and relevant setup, um, which we can control. Um, no fancy stuff, no beta releases from vendors. Still, they're interesting to see this, how it works, this hacker community, and a lot of small packages doing nasty things on the boxes. And one thing we missed last year was native IPv6 connectivity. And um, we have done IPv6 this year right from the start. Maybe a little bit fakey after the IPv6 tutorial in room four, I think, yesterday. <laughs> Some of you tried it very hard to break it. OK. Okay, let's switch. Okay, in-house this year we have a 10 gigabit backbone, and this means this should be enough bandwidth for everyone, and we tried an, uh, again to make uh, many small layer two domains, meaning that you have uh, less broadcast, less ARP traffic in all the networks, and of course we need uh, then inter-VLAN routing and switching, because from one network to another you need connectivity. And so, of course, we need switching and routing devices. Of course. And um, also, we got multiple internet uplink providers providing us bandwidth, a huge amount of bandwidth. I mean, it's, it's just more than entire Africa has. And so, okay. <laughs> and yeah, another new thing is we got a new wireless LAN solution, but I will talk about that later. And we got hardware from various hardware vendors. So let's get to the in-house LAN. What we did there is we have for the access layer where you all plug in, it's a Hewlett Packet 3400 CL switches having 48 gigabit ports. And they are all linked uh, with um, two gigabit trunks to the HP aggregation layer switches. These do. Um, these just connect together all the, the access layer switches, and finally, they are linked to the 10 gigabit backbone, having foundry big iron and HP 94SL hardware. The interconnection between these backbone devices, these HP and foundry, is done via fiber links. The routing, the inter VLAN routing, is actually done by these big uh, HP 94. This is what it looks like. <laughs> you see, the cabling is, um, let's say, a um, little bit improvised and so not perfect, but it actually works. Uh, what you can see in the, uh, the um, right-hand picture is that there are the two fiber links, and these are the two gigabit, uh, 10 gigabit links. This is what the network act, uh, actually is built from. You can see in, in the top level, D57, as last year, there's the main interconnection switch, then you have the, um, then you have for every connection room, you have two uh, distribution switches, the, uh, as I talked about, the HP53, and um, down in the hack center at A85, you have another inter-VLAN um, inter routing switch. On the um, right side, you can see in A87, there is all the uplink hardware. I, uh, we will talk about that later. Um, so this, this is good a bridge for uh, getting to the uplink because the question is how do we root in the local network? Many people asked us last year what, uh, what exactly we did and so this slide is for those people. Um, all routers we have, as you can see, speak OSPF um, for the connected networks. So we distribute every subnet we have um, into OSPF and get there for local routing information but all the external routes from the internet get in via BGP from different providers. As you can see, we get uh, the external routes. They get to all the routing devices, and so the routing decision, what is your next hop in routing, is done by your intervillance, which is your first hop. Okay, let's come to the internet uplink. That's uh, hard. I've done 
um, it's quite difficult to get 20 gigabits of t uh, traffic, and it's not actually 20 gigabits. Some people are told you that we have uh, such a big bandwidth. Um, it's true, if you look at the entrance to the building, we have two dark fiber connections, each with 10 gigabit. We are collecting, um, in some, about 15 to 16 megabits traffic, but um, normally you can use from this three to four gigabit traffic. Actually, if you look at the aggregation of the routes, um, you did not get 10 gig out of it. Um, what you have to do there, um, a way of socializing with carriers, a lot of events since uh, the la January of last year, which I joined, um, like RIPE meeting and D6 meetings. So there's a lot of fun there. If somebody goes there, joins them. There are lots of interesting people running around. The second thing we have to do is uh, to explain them that hackers are not evil. There are a lot of um, information in the network, in call it Google, um, where they say that these events that they are, that they are actually hacking. I, uh, I want to remember the last year's event, I think, was one of the uh, Berlin providers, which has his, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he has his password list on the website for downloading. Um, afterwards, he was a little pissed, sorry. So there's some bureaucratic stuff. Um, one of the providers has one piece of paper. Um, I took a pen and signed it and said, OK, that's a one gig beer with link. Another one sent me 30 pages. Each has to be signed in two copies sent back to Frankfurt. Um, they spawned out a little bit less. Um, what we have also said is uh, there are many people uh, which uh, work uh, for us at the carrier side, and um, normally they have children, they want to go home, they want to have Christmas, uh, therefore the uplink itself uh, is set up before the event. We have this year the first IP uplink one week before the event starts, because during 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th of December, you won't get anybody in second level support helping you if your BGP sessions are crashing or flapping. So as I said before, to uplink fibers, we can make this short. I've uh, told you a lot of these things in advance. Um, enlightened with 10 gigabit. Um, one link was, uh, was possible to use with 10 gigabit because um, with the help of the people from, from, uh, from, from Holland, and um, we have uh, on one link the company called Versatel. Most of you know their DSL provider in Berlin uh, working all over Germany. Um, they supplied us with a native 10 gigabit link to their routing gear at the other end. And the rest of the, the second link was used to aggregate the different uplink providers. Um, we have put all the uplink routers, it's a little bit different from the last year, we put the routers outside of the building and uh, collected the traffic. Um, the reason was that we tried to make this little bit of traffic shaping. Uh, there were only one gigabit link coming to the building and uh, some problem with the traffic, as you have seen, 600 megabit wasn't actually a problem last year, but we didn't know in advance so that we can shape traffic before it goes onto the fiber to the building. This year we have enough bandwidth to push all the traffic to the building. Therefore, there was a secret room um, in the last corner of the building. Um, this was an A87, that's behind the Hexen room. There were a whole pile of equipment which terminates all the IP uplink. So you can say the BCC is some kind of uh, co-location facility. Um, can, yeah, should have brought more servers. Um, Okay, VLAN trunking, um, we have put all the things in Ethernet layer two. Um, there are no, not equipment like POSIP or SDH equipment. Um, uh, most of the providers didn't use it anymore. Um, most of the people have now Ethernet equipment and connecting all the IP uplinks over these boxes. So this is a more detailed picture from the left to the right. On the left side, you see the Versatil link with 10 gigabits terminating at Gradestrasse 40. This is a co-location facility of Versatil. And um, then we have the, uh, uh, the foundry boxes um, getting all the traffic from uh, different vendors, as you see, from Lützowstrasse, Netzsein Coach, and D-Hosting. And we have also um, a second link um, to another co-location facility in Berlin called Albion Contour where we have another gigabit um, sponsored by another company, uh, where we have KPN, Eurorings, and Telia Sonera. 
Um, welcome to them. Uh, KPN, some of you who joined the camp, uh, I think three years ago in Atlantsberg, know that we have some sketches where KPN was in, but this year we made it actually. We, we have connected them. This is the link going to Felton, the longest link, uh, 35 kilometers. It's outside of Berlin where the core routers are put. Then we use the dark fiber connection from Versatel getting to a foundry and then both Juniper boxes terminating um, the sessions. Um, so in horse network looks uh, then connected um, from these points. You can say that all the networking, what's not um, inside this picture is that the, fails, uh, that the force 10 is also connected to the foundry box. Okay, and uh, it looks like this. Um, when you look at the top, the blue boxes, um, this is Juniper, this is two M7i boxes. In between there's a buffer, this is a Cisco switch, <laughs> mainly used for, um, no, no, not disturbing the, the foundry box, and it, no, it's not a physical firewall, it's some kind of, uh, we have their management VLANs on. Uh, Force 10 box is a black one with a lot of those fiber optic cables um, in front of the box itself so that you can hardly see it. And down there we have a Force 10 box, an ESA scale architecture which terminates the Versatel BGP sessions. So, um, as said before, we have um, some kind of a problem if you look at the different bandwidth, um, 10 gig, 1 gig, 100 megabit uplinks. If you have such a mixture of bandwidth, you have to do a little bit of traffic engineering. So, anybody ever heard about traffic engineering and what this is? Ah, not so many people, okay. I'll just give you a short introduction. Um, traffic engineering means that uh, you set, set um, certain preferences what route should be taken into account. Because if you have several providers giving you a full routing table of the whole internet, it's, it's not um, so easy to find out which is the best way. Because BGP is a path vector protocol. That means a route is selected on its length. If a route gets uh, through, let's say, 10 providers, and you have another route to, this, uh, to the same destination, having just two providers in between, the route with the two providers in between is selected. But sometimes this link is not faster than the other one. And so we need to decide what is better. And we got a strategy this time that uh, we do the balancing while uh, setting a local preference at our outbound routers. And we said, hey, if the IP is uh, directly connected to our peers, this is definitely the best way. And so they get the highest local preference. If it's a direct peer of one of our peers, we assign him a medium preference of 200. But uh, Versatel has a very big link of uh, 10 gigabits, and so their direct peers get a um, preference of 300. So they are preferred. And then um, there are some special paths. We know that they are pretty good, like, um, in Berlin, dehosting directly connects uh, via B6 uh, to DFN and some other uh, Berlin providers, and so we prefer the path um, getting in um, via dehosting. We prefer them over any other um, route, like the the ones we got from from KPN or stuff like this. And uh, the local preference, of course, is only for the outbound traffic, but we want also to engineer a little bit about the inbound traffic, but. Engineering inbound traffic is, um, let's say, way more difficult because, um, of course, it's a distance vector protocol, and the only way you can uh, can do stuff like this is uh, by announcing uh, your own autonomous system number, let's say, twice, and so the pass gets longer to this provider, and so this is the way how you select the inbound traffic. I'll show you. Probably some of you saw this site. I show you. Oops, sir. Uh, that's so wichtig. Okay, this is how it works. See, um, this is um, the traffic for the different uplink providers. Here you can see, this is Versatel, and it gets about um, 500 megabits of outbound traffic and not so much inbound traffic. Although KPN gets a lot of inbound traffic, but let's say only 100 megabits of uh, outbound traffic. Telia gets, um, let's say, the same in and outbound bandwidth. And um, Cogent is also selected for outbound traffic. 
This is uh, and the inbound traffic gets less cost we prepended our network twice, as I said before. And so this path gets, let's say, a little worse than the path than Telia and all the others. Finally, we got, uh, we got de-hosting. De-hosting gets uh, the Berlin traffic, and so you can see it has a lot of in and outbound traffic. As we mentioned in the first slides, we also have IPv6, and so we have several IPv6 peerings. We got tra uh, traffic from KPN, Freenet, <laughs> and de-hosting. And as you see, the IPv6 traffic is not so much than the IPv4 traffic, so next time also use IPv6. <laughs> okay, then let's get to the wireless LAN. I think um, the wireless LAN is better, and I, we can just say it worked. Not perfect, but it worked. And so. <laughs> and I, I think we should get someone a, uh, a special applause because it's Mac who took a lot of effort into uh, building the. Wireless LAN. <laughs> okay, let's get to the technical details. This year we got um, a complete solution from Aruba Networks. And um, this is a kind of centralized VLAN switching architecture with an intelligent controller to the access points. This equipment actually worked at the hacker conferences in the United States, namely DEF CON and Black Hat, for the ABG. And here it worked also. The idea of this centralized um, wireless LAN switching is that it uh, does active um, defense and detection of rogue and fake access points. It detects man in the middle attacks and um, fights ad hoc networks. Yeah, and um, the special features of this, this hardware is, as you can see in the map, you can see uh, actually the, the um, transmit power for different, uh, the calculated transmit power for different areas of the building. You have this nice um, a planning tool where you can put in a map of the building and you, you sketch into uh, the the access points, and of course, you have to calibrate it, and then it gets you these heat maps. This is pretty cool for triangulating roach access points, but as you know, uh, when triangulation works for access points, it works also for users, and so it's not probably perfect, okay? Um, the conclusion is it works, and we had a daylight, uh, daylight average for, of about 350 users, 130 at the night, and the user peak was 509. Say about the uh, the rogue access point detection. The, 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 uh, yeah. The, uh, Come on, Rob. The people were actually uh, uh, firing up route, uh, access points every once in a while, and while they were flashing them, they couldn't prevent them from going to certain channels like channel one or channel eleven, depending on the access point. And we got to the point where the where it was so well calibrated that I could actually tell which side of the table it was on from this graph and we could actually call the people up and say you have a rogue access point again and it got to the point where it got scary it's like uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay then let's present some statistics um we had actually 2342 network ports <laughs> that's no joke <laughs> We had um, 40 uh, separated um, virtual LANs, VLANs, and of course we had 40 subnets. These were uh, subnets with uh, prefixes of slash 20 or slash uh, 24. This one is just uh, an example of one of the traffic graphs from the um, 10 gigabit link from um, A to D. And you see, it's a reasonable amount of traffic. Um, as we published before, you can see all the detailed stats at the management side, the URL is at the bottom, if you're interested in. <coughs> For uplink traffic, uh, we, got an a uh, we got an average of about 802 megabits out and about 230 megabits inbound. This is a huge amount. It sums up to a um, accumulated traffic of, of about uh, 40 terabytes outbound traffic in four days and about 10 
terabytes inbound traffic. The peak, uh, the five minute peak of our uplink was about 1.3 gigabits, which is a, a lot. <laughs> Um, I showed you before the traffic distribution to the different peers. These are, these are also on the network. You can access them through the uh, URL down at the bottom. Of course, we had some anom uh, anomalies, because in no case this works just perfect when you build up a network. And we had a lot of fun um, analyzing the channeling and trunking of, or in, in Linux it's called bonding, of different uh, Ethernet devices, so you, you, you take two gigabit devices and you, you form a trunk, and then you have a virtual bandwidth of two gigabit over this link. And there, was, there were some negotiation problems between uh, different devices from, from HP and some, some other vendors. Also we had um, a Mac, we, we, we found out about um, Mac aging time bug in the big HPs, which actually opened the case at Hewlett Packard. And today, some people from United States and France phoned us just to verify what happened and uh, to get more details. So the guys at HP working on a solution for this problem. On the first day, um, the forwarding engine of one of our upstream routers died. It was just not, it was, this routing engine was just rebooting and it was not, not working anymore. Uh, but we had a spare Juniper router and so we can just um, plug in the other one. And so it worked. <laughs> We also had uh, some denial of service attacks, but they were um, a lot less than last year. So probably the. <laughs> yeah. And um, maybe the hacker FX hotline worked this year. Maybe someone used it. I don't know. There were also some very funny de uh, defacements uh, we saw, and we, we actually got some abuse calls, but I think there were, le there were less than five abuse calls, and so this is no problem. And of course, we had uh, many, many Roach access points, but it was a lot of fun uh, to localize them and to shut them down. <laughs> <laughs> Remotely shutting down, because you can do some de auth attacks and stuff like this on these ad access points to, to shut them down. <laughs> but this is, this is just for ensuring that your wireless LAN works, and so. Okay. So I have a quick look to the next year. Um, what hardware to use? Uh, bigger or step back, same building, a new wireless LAN and um, wired LAN. So much uplink, less effort. You see all these signs, use more batteries. And I think it's not a joke. We have a very potential sponsors here and they like to see traffic on the network. So we proved this year that we can build a network, a running network, which is capable of pushing gigabits of traffic. And if you have some nice projects for the next year, um, I've talked to the sponsors this year. They will supply us with the same equipment. Next year, we will also get all the uplinks we have this year. We will get the next year, too. So there will be another 10 gigabit link, um, gigabit link next year. There were some questions if you have 1.3.1.320 uh, gigabit of traffic on the uplink itself, why to use 10 gigabit? Um, it's a problem that in former times in SDH technology you normally have steps like 622 megabits, then 2.5, they're smaller the steps. Um, if you use 2 gigabit as traffic outside, there's only one step you can do, 1 gigabit, 10 gigabit because fiber optics in uh, going to the building are limited. And therefore, even if 10 gigabits looks a lot of traffic you can use, um, if you have 1.5, um, it's important to have these 500 megabits more. And therefore, we decided to use 10 gig next year, too. Um, same building, a new one. There are some rumors um, uh, staying um, uh, that maybe the building is too small or too big. and. Um, as far as I heard, there's a new decision and that uh, I would be delighted to be here in BCC again because the infrastructure is well under control of these 16 people working for you. And therefore, it would be a pleasure to see you all here again and not in a different place where we have a lot of new equipment there and new cabling and maybe also a lot of new problems. 
Um, yeah, wired wireless network, uh, I think we cannot top it uh, next year. We will not have 10 gigabit ports in the C, D, A, and D level. But maybe if somebody has his 10 gigabit line card on a server, maybe we can connect him directly. <laughs> um, wireless LAN, um, I hope that we get Aruba next year or a competitor, uh, competitor with the same equipment, with the same facilities. Pardon me. Um, for which company you are working? <laughs> now I would be delighted to see Aruba again. It was a very great job you have done here, and um, you have to stay all the four days here and helped us is a really great thing because it costs the company a lot of money, and nobody knew in advance what we would do with this equipment. So um, this is alphabetically. We are happy that we have so much sponsors, and we are happy that we that we have all these sponsors. There is uh, no preference in the listing. We have done it alphabetically, starting with Aruba Networks, Cisco System, Force 10, Foundry, Hewlett Packard, Uniper Networks, and for the uplink connectivity, I like to thank the Cogent Communications, D-Hosting, KPN, NetSign, Telia, Zonero, and Versatel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Last thing, thanks for your attention. Questions or suggestions? People staying here. I think network will be up till Rob. Yeah, a little bit about the uh, the teardown procedure. Uh, we'll be starting to uh, get switches out of the hack center and, and sort of out of the, 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 inner, the outer rings fairly soon, pretty much right after this lecture. Uh, please don't be too upset if people start removing your switch, even if it's still working, because we've learned from previous events that we have to roll equipment back in from the periphery while it's still on, because otherwise people start taking stuff home and, and all sorts of other bad things happen. So people will be with your switch and they will be packing it up and taking it home. Please don't beat these people up, but help them. And, uh, <laughs> Hope to see you all next year. So, officially close this session. Seeing you next year and bring more equipment, please. Yeah.